Welcome to my bat report for the week. I've got uh, three bat-related books here that I want to talk about a little bit. And um, I want to thank those people who do bat videos every week, and in particular, Derek Lucarelli and Joshua Hayes. They kind of keep my focus on Batman, keep me wanting to do Batman videos. I've been probably has been four or six weeks since I've really devoted a video to this and I'd been wanting to do weekly ones like they do um, and I'll, I'll never be at their level um, they both uh, very consistently cover uh, whatever bat books they've read each week um, and go very thoroughly into each issue and um, and they're always interesting and fun um, so it's this little space where we can take Batman as seriously as we want to. Um, so yeah, and I, with, as time went on and I hadn't covered Bat issues, I kept thinking I'd do these major catch-up videos with grand overviews and all kinds of detail, and the more time passes, the harder that gets to be. So I'm just going to dive in with this week and not worry too much about covering the past right now or anything like that. Um, who knows what other videos I may or may not do. Um, let's start with Batman Eternal number 42. And um, I enjoyed this issue. It was a, a clear continuation of the story from last issue, which was the Bluebird, Red Robin, Nanotech. You know, that nanotechnology was coming out of people's mouths and stuff. Um, a little confusion as to what nanotechnology means, um, but <laughs> if you wanted to be technical about it, but if you want to be technical about anything in, uh, in this kind of comic book series, I guess you're in trouble. Um, as I've mentioned before, I kind of think of this as the Swiss cheese of the Batman books or of comic books in general. Uh, it doesn't taste bad. It's full of holes, um, and you kind of wish it was a little better, um, but it's still worth snacking on, and it's still it's still fun to get the weekly comic and you know what's going to be happening this week. But there are so many ways in which we I think we all who've been reading it regularly, or many of us who've been reading it regularly, uh, can think of how we might want it want more or want it different, or more cohesive, or whatever. Um, but but it's actually nice, in this issue, we get something that we've been building up to since the preview issue that Scott Snyder did before this series started. I never even read that preview issue, but I've heard everyone talk about it. It had Bluebird in it. It had Harper Rose Bluebird. So at last, we get Bluebird in her costume. I don't know if Greg Capullo you know, drew the same costume in that preview issue. I, I, I'm going to have to get that issue eventually, I guess. Um, uh, my, my reading of the Capullo Batman Snyder series will have to wait for another, another video. But, um, my first thought on looking at the cover is this costume just is kind of a mess, kind of hard to look at. And, um, and I thought, well, on the inside, it'll probably be different. But, uh, but I found it to be the same way on the inside. I guess you could say it's kind of 90s because it's, you know, pouches and straps and a mishmash of different design kinds of things. Um, and some aspects of the costume, I guess, are explained away because it's an anti-nanovirus costume. You would think, really, to be that, it would be totally enclosed. But I suppose one can imagine she has some special transistors that send out radio waves that scare away nanos. <laughs> um, anyway, that's more of the hand wavium, as uh, science fiction writers like to call it, of the constant hand wavium where we pretend there's some kind of technological explanation for something. Uh, so I think her costume is <laughs> my biggest complaint about this issue. Uh, kind of silly of me to complain about it that much. Was her hair like this before? I don't remember. Uh, one of those things where it's shaved on the sides and just long in the middle. For some reason, I don't recall that. Um, this is kind of a 
it's a solid issue. It's it's fun to read and it wraps up one storyline, so that's satisfying after all this time. Uh, you know, if you don't think too much about how sloppy it was to get here, in a sense, that we got a little of this, like, back in, what, issue 6 or issue 9, and then dribs and drabs, but not much until these last two issues. And then, um, and then we get a continuation of the, of the spoiler plot of, um, Oh, now I forgot her name, Stephanie Browns, who also at the beginning in the early issues seemed like a really vital, interesting character and then got kind of lost in the shuffle and we would see little bits of her and the, the timeline, you know, that I've been questioning since early on is, you know, far beyond comprehensible at this point. Um, and she's been captured by her mother who claims not to want to kill her and who's on her side. And I'm wondering why she's claiming that so hard. Um, and why, because we know she wanted to kill her before. Why does she want to keep her alive now? Um, I'm very curious about that. But, um, and as always in these Bat videos, a lot more spoiling goes on than in my regular comic book thought videos. Um, these are more for the people who don't care. Or more, or more importantly, the people who are reading along in these, in these Bat books. Um, so yeah, it, it, I, I enjoyed the appearance of Catwoman, but it threw me off because I thought we were going to, you know, see her mother's evil machinations and instead there's another twist. Um, that's interesting though. And I, I hope, I really hope that storyline continues next issue, uh, to have it, if it's dropped for four issues and then it comes back up in some different form that's going to be really frustrating yet again. So <laughs> someone teased me online that says, you Marvel and DC readers seem to use the word hope a lot. I definitely use the word hope a lot with um, Batman Eternal. I like to think I'm not always using that for all the DC or Marvel books that I read. Um, but it totally is true with, um, with this. I'm always hoping for more. I feel, um, I didn't like the art that much last issue, particularly didn't like the coloring, and the colorist is much better in this issue, I feel, um, as I kind of jokingly predicted, uh, that the colorist would be holding together the art in this issue when I did my pretend reviews yesterday of all the books, you know, a minute after I left the comic book shop. And indeed, for me, the colorist does hold the issue together. The three artists doing, I presume, three different pencilers, but maybe it's two pencilers and an uh, inker? I don't know. I know Goran Sadzuka is usually a penciler, um, and he's the second listed. So I assume at least he and Jed Doughty, who I've never heard of before, are... are um, pencilers, or maybe penciler inkers. Anyway, the art, for to me, for being by three different artists, it feels fairly consistent. Um, if there's a flaw with it, it's more that it's, um, it's the usual flaw with Batman Eternal of the constantly changing styles from issue to issue. Um, it's a more, uh, if you will, clean style with, you know, hard lines and um, I thought with plenty of effective storytelling, the creepiness of the mother, um, is brought out well. The, the mother of Stephanie Brown is brought out well. <clears throat> I was er early in the Batman Eternal run. I was kind of, as they were building up, uh, I was finally liking Harper Rowe, who I didn't like in the earlier Batman books, and and they I was definitely liking Stephanie Brown, and I was kind of looking forward to them spinning off out of this book into their own books or team books. Like I I still kind of can see a Bluebird Red Robin, you know, because their names even fit together, team up, and that could be a lot of fun. So I'm hoping that happens. Um, I'm can't see now where Stephanie Brown is going to. Um, 
but she's still potentially an interesting character. I think, you know, I, even though I say I just have to ignore it, you know, this idea that there's nanotechnology is like this ghosty stuff that comes out of your mouth. Nanotechnology should be invisible, right? So that's not nanotechnology. That's something else inside of them. Uh, like, like I said, it's a decent issue. They solve the issue of the, you know, given how long it's taken and everything and how horrific it was when it was introduced early on, the problem of the Mad Hatter and his nanotechnology taking over teenagers or other sick people uh, is is handled too easily, but within the context of Batman Eternal, this was a plus for me. Um, it's helping me go on into the last ten issues. My understand they did at one point say there was going to be 60 issues, but lately I've been hearing 52 issues, and I think the idea for 60 issues... Uh, has grown into they're going to do a second season of Batman Eternal. Uh, one of my big fears is that they won't wrap up this story because they have a second season coming and they're going to leave a lot of the story threads running. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so that's that's my, my basics for this Batman Eternal. Um, I... My dream is the next issue will have a lot about Stephanie Brown, but we'll also see Batman working harder to try to figure out who this mystery person is, just finding little cards in people's pockets, which is awfully convenient and utterly useless to us as a clue at this point, um, is kind of stupid. But you know, that's what it is. <laughs> okay, Batman and Superman is a better read. I'm just on the ride for this story arc uh, because I try to I try to for 399 books from the big two, I try to wait for trade, especially if they're not just must have things for me. Um, this is written by by uh, Greg Pack, so that makes it a bit tempting to me because he's often been one of my favorite writers. I'd say this issue um, as I predicted, it does not wrap up the arc. I guess maybe it's going to be a six-issue thing, so it'll fit in a trade neatly, which seems unfortunate to me. It seems like it would have been a good three-issue story. So now it feels like they're going to be stretching it a bit. Um, they did, at the end of the issue, add a new twist to what might be happening, which is... This is basically a Superman book, really. So it's all about Superman and Kandor. And Batman is really just an ally, a secondary character. Um, so so the linking to Kandor, the bottled city of Kandor, where everyone is supposedly in a coma. In fact, they've lost the bottle. But at the end, uh, apparently they found the bottle. And so... Maybe next issue, Batman and Superman will shrink down and go into the city of Kandor. That that could be kind of fun. Or maybe something else is going to happen. Um, so, so I found the twists clever enough, but maybe not clever enough to support a whole issue, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, I did like that Batman, while helping Superman, is still playing with him and playing... A, a game with Superman and with their unknown foe. It's weird that this foe's voice can be heard anywhere. It's like he can see Superman anywhere, so he knows where to talk to him, and he can overhear anything Superman's saying, whether it's in outer space or uh, in the Arctic at the um, at the uh, Fortress of Solitude. So I wonder how much of an explanation we're going to get for that. <clears throat> The um, the Jim Lee way of drawing Superman as this kind of grim yet pretty boy kind of person is not my favorite edition of Superman, but I guess that's that's the standard for the New 52 Superman, I suppose, since he was designed by Jim Lee. Um, so yeah, I enjoyed this issue. I'm not regretting picking it up, and I'm going to get the whole arc. And then uh, unless... Like, with this one, I picked it up because I heard some people talking about how good it was, and they were right, um, including Derek Lucarelli uh, and Audrey, a comic book mom. Um, so I'm really glad that I'm reading it. But I don't think I'm 
hungering all the time for a Batman Superman book. So, <laughs> I often say I'm going to wait for the trade and then I pick things up anyway. So we'll see after this arc ends if I keep picking it up. Yeah. I, oh, there was one other thing. As someone who's been reading a lot of the DC New 52, I read the entire Frankenstein Agent of Shade um, series, and I always had the impression that Shade was a secret, that Batman and Superman didn't have, or any of the Justice League, have easy access to Shade. But, um, it's telling me my battery's running low. Uh... But in this, they they whisk off to Shade and consult with Ray Palmer. Um, and in this timeline, Shade is still being controlled by Father Time, because Father Time is only usurped five years in the future and future's end. Um, so I just found that part convenient or odd, and there's no explanation or anything. It's just, oh, here we are in Shade. Um, another interesting thing with the whole Superman thing is we have all this shrinking technology with Ray Palmer, um, and all kinds of super technology, but they can never figure out how to unshrink Kandor. Um, you would think that that's something Ray Palmer could figure out. Anyway, that's just nitpicking. It's a problem of the, of this huge universe that DC has with so many powers and so much stuff going on. If you really think about it, so many problems should be solvable that in individual books are unsolvable, like the shrinking of Gandor for Superman. So yeah. And then to the piece de resistance. That's my favorite cover of the week. And this may well... I haven't read all my indies this week. And often an indie ends up being my favorite book of the week. But this, uh, at the moment, feels totally in contention for favorite book of the week. This was a wonderful, wonderful issue of Batman and Robin. Which has already been an excellent book. Uh, through the Robin Rises story arc, um, and before that for me, on and off for a while, uh, since Robin died. Uh, but I'm really glad to see and to report that with this issue, they remain, the, the creators here remain strong and, and just doing amazing work. And uh, so that includes uh, most definitely uh, Patrick Gleason, who who, as many of us feel, is kind of on and off, and he's still totally on, if not on even more than he was the last few issues, um, which were amazing. Um, and, and Peter Tomasi is totally on target, and one thing I really notice with his Batman is he is a man of few words, and Tomasi picks out just the right words and has him say just the right things. Um... You know, Robin, enough, get in the car. And, uh, you know, various things like that, where he just... And the, the dialogue is so well picked out that it gives us a lot of Batman's character without being wordy, um, which is important, because I think that lack of wordiness is an important part of his character. And, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of times when a character has a dream sequence, it's kind of weak, but in here... Robin's dream, dream sequence is right on. It, it really feels like it could be a dream, and it really feels like a psychological revelation and an inspiration to Robin. Um, and it, uh, he turns a nightmare into a positive um, in more ways than one. I mean, the nightmare of parts of his life into a positive. I love that when he wakes up from the dream, he smashes up through into Alfred's room above. Um, and Alfred just calmly says... Trouble sleeping, Master Damien? <laughs> um, so, you know, I was kind of worried. I, I <laughs> So, I got cut off there in the middle of saying that uh, I was worrying that um, when they brought back Robin, it would feel fake or forced after they killed him off. But, in fact, um, the way they brought him back you know, was so cool, and now the the Robin that they have back is a really cool idea. I think it was a good idea to bring him back kind of the same character, but with this different set of powers so that we get a new situation that Batman and he have to deal with. Um, and, you know, we got such amazing scenes and such amazing opportunities for... Um, 
for uh, Robin to use his powers in, such as, you know, when he goes down into, down to Atlantis and visits Aquaman to get his clone brothers back. Um, you know, it was just, it was just a perfect issue, really. Um, I can't, I can't find any flaws in it. Um, not that I'm trying, uh, but it's interesting because there's little hints about, you know, how, what are his power levels and all of that kind of stuff. And, um, looks like we'll be maybe exploring that more next issue. Who knows? So I think as long as Batman and Robin can just continue as Tomasi can continue just focusing on what he's doing and not be interfered with too much from the outside, uh, outside events, you know, this need to line up everything with whatever Scott Snyder does is, worries me, you know, do they have, are they going to have to deal with, um, uh, end game, you know, let's just keep that out of this book, don't mix that chocolate with this peanut butter, um, in this case, even though I like chocolate and peanut butter together, so that, that becomes a bad metaphor, um, so yeah, I'm just I'm really looking forward to the next issue. I'm looking forward to going back and maybe rereading the whole Robin Rises sequence. I do sort of feel like the uh, Robin Rises Omega and Alpha were perhaps editorial demands, and that Tomasi dealt with them by uh, making each one of those extra fat issues a little scene that he stretched out and puffed out. And that we get the real meat of things um, in the Batman and Robin book itself. And that uh, Patrick Gleason is his ideal um, compatriot, his ideal collaborator on these. Uh, they just work so well. And more is, uh, less is more here. Um, whereas in the uh, Robin Rises Alpha and Omega, it felt like more was less, <laughs> if you know what I mean. There was a whole lot going on that added up to just a little bit. Um, but yeah, just really made my uh, comic book reading week so far to to have this continue on such a high note and perhaps an even higher note than, than ever before. So I will um, I will be back at you with some regular comic book thought videos possibly some other things that are bubbling around in my mind, all depending on, uh, you know, whether life and Mrs. Sleepy gives me the time to do these things. And uh, maybe a look back at other Batman stuff I've been reading that I haven't really been reporting on lately. So, thanks to all of you, uh, all of you Bat fans for sticking with me, and uh, for those of you who make Bat related videos. Thank you very, very much, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.